Hi, and uh, welcome back to the channel. So, what are we talking about today? A change from the uh, recent um, stuff that we've been talking about. I'm visiting or revisiting another one of the, uh, the main audiophile labels uh, in operation at the moment, Analog Productions. And this is their top tier of uh, product, the UHQR. Actually, I tell a lie, their top tier of product is um, Ultra Tape, but we'll, um, I've covered those before and we'll get back to that, uh, not in this video, but we'll talk about those uh, at another time. I've got plenty more to review. So this is the top vinyl tier of analog productions, UHQR. And as you see, they come in a rather fabulous, very solid box. Uh, I've left the cling film on this just um, well, because I've literally just got it. And I wanted you to see the um, labels here because uh, unlike some, what analog productions believe in is complete and utter transparency. Now, uh, before I go on further, actually, if you if you want to click a link, I'll put a link just up here. And this is to um, Analog Productions, Chad Kasem, talking about uh, about this particular album. But there's there's if, if once you find the channel, uh, I really would subscribe to it, frankly, and have a look around because there's many, many, many really, really informative and really, really interesting videos on the whole process from finding the tapes and how they treat the tapes and uh, all the way through to, you know, mastering, cutting, pressing the vinyl. And another thing I should say about uh, analog productions is Chad owns um, Acoustic Sounds, which is the retail business that, that, that uh, he started initially selling other other manufacturers and second-hand collectible records and analog productions is his record label and they make uh, records tapes digital digital media and they also sell one-to-one -one master tape copies which i've talked about before again i'll put a link to one of those videos just here and um i've got I've probably got about 10 of those and they are absolutely stunning Chad, if you're watching um, an ultra tape of this would be really, 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 really nice. Uh, but there we go. Let's carry on with this. So this is this really is sourced from the original master tapes and they'll 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 be taken along to um, Bernie Grunman's studio uh, where he will cut the record from those tapes and then the, the record will be produced plated and um, the stamp is made and pressed in qrp which is uh, analog productions or chad kasem's own vinyl very high quality vinyl pressing plants so it's an impressive company and an impressive product so what you get it's it's undeniably nice so what you've got, you've got a, a sort of an inner which slides out. The nice thing about this is you could leave that on the record shelf and just slide that out. I've only got two of these, this and, my, and kind of blue, but if I, if I had dozens, I mean, I haven't made dozens yet, but if I did, then um, that might be a nice way of working with it. But anyway, what, what do we get in here? So first of all, we do get the original album cover something that um, some other audiophile repress companies don't give you. Now this of course is the US album cover and um, it wasn't initially a gatefold but you can see they found some really nice pictures and, and put those in there. It's uh, serial numbered, there is 20,000 of these pressed and that is a fully limited pressing run of which uh, certificated here. See, we've got Chad's signature, and yeah, this explains there is just 20,000 of these made. And uh, you've got nice little um, patents, I suppose. Yeah, patent for the UHQR process and for Clarity Vinyl. What, what else you get in here, which I think is rather nice, is this uh, full 
details of the whole specifications, the, 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 the production process all the way through. It really is good. Um, do go visit their website. You'll find out an awful lot of stuff. It's, it's you know that's the way to run a business, making records, in my opinion. Uh, and here we've got a a beautiful booklet. Um, and you can just see it's it's extremely nicely produced. It really, really, really is. You get something exceptionally, exceptionally cool. Um, and you've uh, and frankly, I think. I mean, these are quite expensive in the UK. Best part of two hundred pounds. Um, but I think you kind of get what you pay for, really. I'm not going to argue with the price of it. And then last but no means least, interesting that they actually package this separately within the box. It obviously will, it will fit into the cover. And I know there are some people that seem to hate the boxes with a vengeance. And well, if I hated them that much, I'd just slip this in here and put that on my shelf. I, I, yeah, I kind of really like the book. Uh, I'm not going to argue with the box anyway. So here's, here's the vinyl. Clarity vinyl has no carbon black pigment in it, which is reputed to uh, create issues with LP playback. Now, I've actually got a Furutech demagnetizer, which I use to... Um, counteract that because the you know the the supposition is that the carbon black can hold a minute magnetic field and uh, moving coil or moving magnet cartridges certainly being um, electromagnetic generators that kind of creates a certain degree of um, electromagnetic fog around the generator and therefore kind of a fog to the sound but this um this clarity vinyl is is super 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 pure and having played it i've got to say it's it's as, it is absolutely quiet it's, it, you know there's nothing to there's nothing to not like about the sound of, of this vinyl slightly given the game away they're talking about the sound quality whereas i haven't um really got into that some of the things yet now what am I going to compare this to? I mean, it, it sounds, it, I'll just say, first of all, it sounds bloody incredible. It is, it is really detailed, very, very, very kind of open, dynamic. The clarity is, uh, is amazing. And anyone who knows this recording will know that it, it, it's, those are things that we wouldn't really use to describe the original. So by way of comparison, what I'm comparing it to is this. Now this is my UK first pressing original. It's on track records, track 612001. Uh, let me just put the uh, analog productions away again for a minute. It's got a matte back. The, the second issue had a gloss back. So this is a little laminated gloss front, matte back. Um, so 1967. UK original. Now, the first thing to note is this is mono. And this came out early 67, I believe. Yeah, early 67. Um, a good few months, I mean, maybe half a year before the uh, US version. And um, initially it only came out in mono. So there wasn't a stereo version. Although I do know that they recorded it in stereo, or it was mixed to stereo, and not electronically rehanced. It was, you know, it was properly mixed to stereo, I believe. Anyway, um, but the initial release, the, the you know, this album on release was mono only, and it took a few months before a stereo version came out in the states. Now the next thing to note is. Um, quite different track listings there's three tracks uh three tracks on here that aren't on here and similarly three tracks on here that aren't on here the uk includes red house which is a beautiful song can you see me and also remember what it doesn't include are 
Purple Haze, Hey Joe, and The Wind Cries Mary. Now, I really, really, really like Red House. I mean, I like all the songs. The whole, the whole album is absolutely fabulous. But there's no denying that the Purple Haze, Hey Joe, and The Wind Cries Mary, the three that they put on here in place of the three they dropped from the original, are kind of unmissable songs. So you really need both copies, I say. And if you're really, really pushed and you can only have one, then I would go for the US, even though it's not the original release. Because Henry's, of course, even though he was uh, American, it was in the UK that he made his name and it was in the UK that he recorded these albums at, the, at um, Olympic Studios. And uh, he was kind of discovered by Chaz Chandler of the animals and brought over and, and it was Chaz that um, teamed him up with Mitch Mitchell and Noel Redding. And uh, as, as a three piece, they are just on fire. It's, it's, it's absolutely on fire music. It, 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 it's, it's, there's such a driving groove and power and, and solidity to the sound. It, it's, it's quite incredible. Now, that's kind of all you get on the mono original. Uh, there's, there's very little of what I would call audiophile. Well, there's clearly no stereo effect because it's mono, but there's very little of what I would kind of call audiophile quality recording. It's, 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 it's quite thick. It's a bit dirty. But, you know, by God, is it ballsy and does it drive? Um, it's, it's just, you know, it, it, you hear just what can be so, so, so good about a three piece kind of trio in the same, you know, same vein as Cream or something like that. It's just that they are on fire. Now, you know, this by contrast is, is a wide open and very, very early stereo. It's, it, I mean, literally there's, I mean, which track was it? Um, May This Be Love. I mean, the whole, the whole musical thing, you know, whether it's it, it, the instruments, they're just, they're just panning from left to right and back to front. And it, it, it's uh, very psychedelic, I think would be an, an apt, an apt, uh, an appropriate description for the mixing there. And uh, yeah, it's, it, this is a superb album. There's no question. There's no question. Uh, but it's, it's, if there's anything that, th if there is one thing that this doesn't have, I would say it hasn't quite got the meat, if you like, of this, that, 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 that ballsy kind of solidity, particularly to the bass and the drums. There's a power to that, to the original, which um, kind of is a little bit lighter in this. It's, it's, it, but but it's in, in every other way. This this is just this far exceeds it, and I think it's is is easily the best version on vinyl available. Anything else necessarily to say about it? Uh, I mean, I, you know, it, it's. I mean, Jimmy Jimmy Hendrix has got a really 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 sweet sweet voice. And that's captured really nicely here. You can you can hear it on the original, but it's it's you know there is a veiling. Yeah, I don't think I think um, there's a coherence to the mono, a musical kind of coherence, which is great. Which is, you know, on this you you might find it off-putting with the you know the stereo panning and and, and the left rightiness i mean foxy lady for instance it, it it's interesting because you the, the the three instruments are all central so it, it it almost sounds like the mono recording but jimmy's voice is on the hard left uh or hard left if you face it you know sorry i'm i'm imagining i'm sat in between the speakers so hard left's over there but yeah when as i'm listening to it jimmy's voice is hard over there backing vocals are hard over there on the right and everything else is in the middle. So that kind of, it, it, it maintains something of that sort of weight and drive of the original. Whereas I experience the next track, the final track in fact, it's suddenly, woof, the soundstage is just wide open and um, you know, a massive soundstage that just fills the entire room, everything in front of you is 360 degrees almost. Well, 
180 at least and uh and that that you know i think that that's one trait of the album is each song feels quite different but this is you know this is the this is this is without doubt the best version of this i've ever heard on vinyl by a long way mm. i got this from david brook at brook audio i know he still has a few copies left i know that there are a few copies left at um acoustic sounds but they there were only 20,000 made uh, they'll be going quickly and they're not going to be repressed so it's an incredible album you know a milestone in the history of music really and i think um essential pretty much essential for anyone's record collection and um this is the best version i've heard of it simple as that so if you can afford it, get it. If you can't afford it, then um, I believe there's, you know, there are other pressings around which 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 aren't aren't vastly expensive. And whilst you're not getting the, you know, direct from the master tape quality, you need to hear the record. So, on that note, I think I'll say cheerio. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for subscribing. If you are a subscriber. And I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.